In this video series, I'm going to examine various jigs and fixtures and discuss common locating and clamping elements. And we'll start with this part here. So first, this is a valve body. This is the final machining operation. It's going to be done on a vertical milling machine. So I know that all these features shown in red will be machined. I'll just rotate around here, including this. So I need them facing the spindle. To do that, we'll often use an angle plate such as the one shown here. And in this case, I'm using one that's been welded up and then machined to suit our fixturing needs. So next, we always want to consider how will we hold our part. Most parts will be held using the 321 planar method or the 311, where three points on a plane and two concentric locators. For this part, I'm going to first turn its transparency on so we can see through it. For the three point location, which is sitting on the bottom face, I've just decided to have an 01 hardened and ground plate machined to suit the needs. Next, I want to look at do I do another planar location with two points or do I do a concentric location? Well, for this part, there is no real easy planar location for the next. So I'm going to go to concentric and luckily this large bore has a tight tolerance and I have several options. So in this video, I only want to present one and one way to concentrically locate a larger bore is to use three dowel pins. So I have three hardened and ground dowel pins here that the part will locate over top of. What's important with the dowel pins, I'm just going to look normal to this face. What's important with these dowel pins to locate that bore is that I consider the bore at its MMC, maximum material condition. So the circle that touches the tangent point of the three dowels must be at the maximum material condition of the hole, or in other words, the smallest hole in the part. So now I have to be careful. Do I choose on-size dowels? Do I choose undersized dowels? Or do I work with oversized dowels? And I have to take into to the total tolerance of the dowel. So I have to assume they're at their maximum material condition as well. Next, once I have it on my dowels and against that O1 plate, it can still rotate. It's important that this part be oriented with this face facing the spindle. So I've added this block in this block to foolproof it. So if someone were to try and set this face down here, it wouldn't work, or it wouldn't work if it came down here. They have to have it in this orientation. So now the part can rotate just until it bumps the foolproofing blocks. To get the orientation of this surface correct, well, this lobe is opposite, 180 degrees away. So I've chosen in this case and again, I want to stress for each time we discuss something, it's just a different way to do something. There are many ways to do it. So I've chosen to go with a V-block to realign the part for its final concentric locator. The screw here, so the operator can put their thumb on, pull it down, and then release it to orient the part. And then they can add these two swing clamps and rotate them into place. Now, because this is orienting the part and it needs to slide, the width of this will likely be ground, as will the width of the block it slides in be ground. So it's a nice sliding fit with a very tight tolerance because our alignment is always critical. Any bit this little lobe can rotate will put this face off on an angle. 